2014 Ford F-150 with a 3.7 liter engine we're gonna take out the two cylinder heads we're gonna bring them to the machine shop we're gonna do the timing chain this one has the water pump outside right there this one has four cam phasers not the ones that have two let's check the compression on one of the cylinders here crank the engine for me please All right, this is the compression here. This compression is too low, 90 psi, not even 90 psi, like 88. Got the feeling there are some leaking valves. Hope they are not vent valve, uh, vent valves or something. But this compression is too low. We're gonna send the the cylinder heads to the machine shop anyway, and they are going to be rebuilt there. So let's see. It. Here, one, two, three, four. 8 millimeter bolts for the thermostat housing here. Removing the intake manifold is very easy. Eight millimeter bolts here for the lower intake manifold. Alright, there are two on the other side there. I don't know if they can if they can be seen. Oh, that's the sucker right there on one of them. And that's the other one right there. This intake manifold has a hose and a wheel there too. The lock for the fuel for the fuel line here. What you do is you just push it from this step here and it comes out on this side here. Alright, that's the intake manifold out and that is the hose right there. This one as you can see. That's the clip right there, the quick disconnect, squeeze it, and then pull out the hose. That's how it looks like once you take out the intake manifold. I'm pulling out the valve cover here, 10 millimeter bolt, one, two, three, four, five. Another one in the corner there, that's number six. And another one here, and another one here, another one here, another one here, and one in the middle here. So I pry it out from here and from here very carefully and pull it out. And the cam lobes right there, it looks very good. By seeing them like this, the camshaft, they look good. I don't see any wear or uneven wear on the lobes. This valve cover has um, some um, wire harness attached to it here. All you gotta do is pry them out with some clips. Those wires at the end right there, those right there, they are attached to the to the valve cover. The hose right here that goes here on the thermostat housing, I have it over here on this side because I didn't take it out from those two hoses right there because then that takes more work so I just put it aside and tie in here with a piece of rope. That is the crunch of poly right there. I already put the put the poly right there. I'm gonna see if I can pull it out. And that, this is the other hose that goes in the thermostat housing here too. I took out almost all of the bolts here, eight millimeter bolts on the water pump. It still has one in the bottom. Here is the bunch of poly, it's still attached to the poly right here and this poly is not designed to pull this bunch of poly from this engine here but I managed how to do it by using the, the bolt of the bunch of poly See the tip of this poly is so big so just be careful because the head of this poly can hit this part here on the bunch of poly This is a dual last from AutoZone It's not designed for this engine but only for this one as you can see here on the information but as I said, I got to pull it out with this one, so somehow it worked for me. I'm gonna pull out the time machine cover here, all 10 millimeter bolt. The AC compressor, 10 millimeter bolt right there, right there. Two bolts are bolted on the time and chain cover, the one on the bottom and one and that one right there. Ahí está. On the other side of the AC compressor is another bolt right there. 
see right there you have access here all you gotta do is uh, move this uh, this uh, horses here see these two here on this side I took them out All right, this is uh, how it looks like. You see, I want to show the bolts right there. As you can see, those are all the bolts. If someone needs the, 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 the spot of every bolt here in this case. Taking out two 8mm bolts here for these oil control valves, solenoid valves. Two eight millimeter bolts for this guy here, time and guy. My recommendation here is to lose these two bolts first, the cam facers bolt, and uh, you're gonna use uh, one of these wrenches here. This it should be 26 millimeter wrench. This bolt T60 by the way, and in my case I already did that. I'm gonna put this wrench here so in case if the cam moves. This guy here it seems like it's in very good condition here. It's not broken or anything. It seems like it's from the dealer. I'm gonna take out the tensioner here. This is the time machine guy and it looks very good too except for some scratches here I don't know why he has these scratches I don't know if when they installed it uh, they did the scratches here but it's not too much I don't know if it's from the time timing chain Again, this bolt for the cam facers, they are T60. Remember, this bolt here have to be, they have to be replaced since these ones are top to yield. That means that they stretch according to the, to the manufacturer. Remember this bolt and this one here and this cam facer, the one on the side and both sides is bigger. See? To remove these cam facers, push down on the tensioner in the collapse position. You can do it from here from this hole. You can insert a screwdriver that can fit here on this hole, but I don't have any screwdriver that can fit here as you can see. So I'm gonna do it from here. Ready? Mm -hmm. To pull out this cam facer, you have to fire a little bit some time, you have to wiggle them. This is how you push down the tensioner to the collapse position. Oops. and that's how it looks right there without any timing uh, components all right the exhaust manifold right there the head of the bolt have been eaten by the rust no way to grab them with any kind of socket and the ones here it's dark right there you cannot be seen but they are even worse so we're gonna cut a start from here I, I already started to cut that one, that one right there, and we're gonna pull out the cylinder head with the exhaust manifold. That's the idea because taking it out here is gonna take forever. And the reason we don't cut it here is because we already looked on the other side and it's not gonna be easy to weld on the other side once we put everything back. Since there is uh, no space to weld on, on the other side, the space is too small and we are afraid we're not going to be able to weld very well on the other side. See, this is the oxygen sensor right there, the O2 sensor, as you can see. 
and just if you we go a little bit down right there that's the catalog converter I haven't even taken a look on the other side and the driver's side it should be about the same probably and these bolts here have no head at all there is no way we can uh, insert a socket here so that's why we're cutting them and we already cut the bolts right there the studs both of them Eight millimeter bolt here for the camshaft caps and we're gonna start here from the middle and we're gonna spread it out just like that now this is called the mega cap that's what Ford calls it mega cap for now I'm just pulling everything out but once I'm putting everything back I'm gonna do everything with the manufacturer specifications including the location of every component now if you think you're gonna get confused just take a picture or something before pulling this uh, this out they go by number anyway but it's a good idea to take control of the entire situation and not to get confused at the end all right before taking out the lifters you should mark them one two three four and so on that's the best thing to do when they are here just in case if you get confused because they have to come to the same spot they were all uneven and if you make mistake or you get confused you put this one here once you put everything back and this one is worn out more than this one here then the engine is gonna remain noisy so just be careful with that the cylinder head bolts and again start from the metal and spread it out and just uh, turn it just a little bit a little bit maybe half of a turn and go to the next one do not lose it completely and then go to the next one because then you're gonna put pressure on one side of the cylinder head you might break it so just be careful with that this one here eight millimeter bolt just like that oh, oh. the next step right there the uh, camshaft position sensor we're gonna take them out 8 millimeter bolt they are kind of accessible right there so we still have the that one to remove right there and just push it from this side See the other one is hanging there on the other side. I have a photo today, you want push your hand. There it goes. Alright. I pulled it out already. And these head bolts are now reusable since they are torqued to yield so just be careful with that you have to you have to use new ones next step here before pulling out the cylinder head make sure you have the spot ready just to sit the cylinder head and a piece of cardboard or something like that make sure you don't drag it at the time of taking it out do not drag it because you're gonna damage the surface even though the cylinder head has to go to the machine shop but take care of the cylinder head before the cylinder head going to the machine shop and i forgot to take out the ground see the ground here my friend is gonna take out the eight millimeter bolt here i forgot it We removed it already you see the exhaust manifold right there the bracket has to be removed taking a quick look at the head gasket here i can see that this head gasket is completely blown the owner of the vehicle did not tell me that it was losing any freeze but somehow i can see that it's leaking because it's completely blown so this is not a good thing but let's see what happens All right, cylinder head number two here on the driver's side, and those are the camshaft position sensors right there. See, right there. These ones are kind of pain in the neck to remove the bolt. I use eight millimeter wrench here, ratchet wrench, as you can see. 
so I hardly could do it with this one but I got away with uh, doing it uh, with that small ratchet so what you do is you push him from here and here he is and the other one on the other side right here the head bolts 15 millimeter bolt uh, I cut the stud and the, and the exhaust manifold since they are all rotting now you can start by removing this bolt here 8 millimeter bolt before starting removing all the big bolts here I'm gonna pull out the cylinder head and this one I did not take out the lifters at this point I'm gonna mark them outside I do not recommend to do it this way because if an accident happens when you're pulling out the cylinder head the lifters might come out you might lose the spot so just be careful with that Alright, that's how it looks like it right there without the cylinder heads. This is a good moment to replace the neck sensors right there. The neck sensors are pain on the neck to remove with the cylinder heads on top. Those uh, camshaft position sensors, pain on the neck also to remove them with the cylinder heads being installed on the engine. I'm trying to, to give the, the head of the bolt a little bit of shape. 12 millimeter bolt. This one fits right there. So we're gonna see if we can take them out. No, nothing. See, this one is 11 millimeter socket. I'm gonna try this one. This one came out. All right, I removed the other ones on the other side, but I had to cut some with the grinder right there. So I got to insert the 11 millimeter socket on this one. I'm gonna try it. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna put a 12 millimeter socket on this one and I'm gonna tap it. Got to pull it out finally. Putting some water here on the ports on the exhaust side of the cylinder heads to see if the valves are leaking or something. I have done this with water all the time. You can do it with diesel or whatever you want to. And I can see this valve here is leaking very little, basically sweating. After a few minutes, it's still the same, basically. The three of them. After about seven minutes, uh, this one here also started leaking very little, almost nothing either. This also passes the test. All right, now here, this is the intake side. We're gonna see how everything goes here with these valves. After about five or six minutes of uh, having the water on the ports, the intake valves are leaking a little bit. They still can pass probably, but uh, definitely this has to be fixed. They are leaking, these ones are leaking a little bit more. The exhaust side basically did not leak, just sweating a little bit. All right, update here with the intake side. Still, these valves are leaking a little bit faster right now. After a little while, they started to leak a little bit faster, pouring some water on the floor. I don't like this uh, kind of leak anymore because they are leaking kind of fast. Not sure if they still can pass, but anyway, I don't like to take chances. I'm gonna ask the machine shop that this has to be fixed. See, they're leaking a little bit faster right now. Kind of a lot of water already. 